Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about scalp tension to see if it really is an important factor in the process of male pattern baldness. Firstly, we'll look at what causes scalp tension and why it might be present in men. Next, we'll see how this could lead to hair loss. Then, we'll look at all relevant studies to see what happens when you reduce tension in the scalp. Does the hair regrow? A lot of people talk about how the hair follicle needs microvascular circulation to grow. Maybe scalp tension reduces this overall blood flow to the hair follicle bulb. Let's dive in and find out. So underneath the top part of your scalp is a layer of connective tissues called the galea. Its function is to connect the muscles at the front and the back of your head, allowing motions like raising your eyebrows or wrinkling your forehead. Regardless of how advanced a man's baldness becomes, it will always be restricted to the parts of the head overlying the galea. The sides in the back of the head, which are not above the galea, never go bald. This alone raises the possibility that there is a casual link between the galea and baldness. But there is far more to the story. A few years ago, scientists created a mathematical model of the chronic tension that the galea experiences as a result of its connection with the muscles to the front and back of the head. This tension is then transmitted into the overlying scalp skin. The results were astonishing. It turns out that there is a remarkable correlation between the degree of tension the various parts of the galea experience and the tendency of the overlying scalp to go bald. You can see this illustrated in the images below. On the right is the typical pattern of hair loss and on the left, a map of the tension, the lighter shades indicating higher tension. The areas with the highest tension are the first to go bald, followed by those with intermediate tension, the areas with the lowest tension, either bald last or don't bald at all. Statistically, the chances of this being a coincidence are less than one in 1,000. The observation that chronic tightness is a hallmark of male baldness is not limited to theoretical models. Many hair loss clinicians anecdotally report that the scalp of their balding patients appear to be very tight. And in 2020, a report out of Taiwan confirmed that compared to healthy controls, the scalp of balding men is harder in the front and crown areas but no such differences existed between women with and without pattern hair loss. Consequences of long-term tension. While scalp tightness doesn't have immediate effects on hair follicles, over a long run, it can lead to a cascade of problems. It's possible that this tightness is behind the chronic low-level inflammation that is often observed in balding scalps. This inflammation is readily visible underneath a microscope in the upper third of the follicles in balding areas. Scientists call it microinflammation to distinguish it from the more acute and destructive inflammation seen in other types of hair loss, like scarring alopecias. But this inflammation might be linked to another hallmark of balding scalps, namely the accumulation of collagen and other structural proteins in the area surrounding the follicles. This eventually grows to the point where it completely fills the space occupied by the now miniaturized hair follicles. At this point, the hair loss is more or less irreversible. The third hallmark of a balding scalp and the one that is more unequivocally linked to chronic tightness is a deficit in blood flow. Compared to healthy controls, the scalp of balding men has 2.6 times less blood flow. The deficit is especially pronounced in those parts of the scalp that are prone to balding, which, as we saw, are those with the highest tension. This makes sense as the tension in the scalp constricts the vessels, impairing their ability to circulate blood. It's no consequence that drugs like minoxidil are effective as they artificially dilate the vessels, restoring blood flow to the scalp, albeit temporarily. Now people often ask, why do women not go bald like men? They don't have scalp tension? And the answer is, women don't have high levels of DHT. It's the combination of chronic scalp tension and DHT that lead to fibrosis in the scalp which then leads to hair follicle miniaturization. Some people also argue that transplants show that the hair follicle itself is the most important factor in balding, not the scalp. But when you take a closer look at hair transplants, you actually see the opposite is true. During a hair transplant, hairs are taken from the back of the head, the derner area, and transplanted into the balding areas at the front. Firstly, nearly all transplant patients will be required to take finasteride and we know finasteride stops further hair loss. But for any hair transplant patients that don't take finasteride, those transplanted hairs will start thinning. It just takes roughly five years for the process of miniaturization to become noticeable. You can ask any transplant patients from 10 years ago who did not take finasteride the entire time, 
and they will tell you categorically that those transplanted hairs have thinned out. Also, while the donor area of the back of the head remains in good condition. This shows categorically that the position of the head due to scalp tension, which in turn causes fibrosis and reduced blood flow, is linked to hair loss. So let's talk about addressing the problem. This is all well and good, but it raises the question of what you can do to address the chronic tension in your scalp and thereby reverse your baldness. There are two major ways to accomplish this. First is the loosening of the muscles surrounding the scalp via the injection of Botox. Botox essentially freezes the muscles, causing them to go flaccid. This is why it's most commonly used to stop wrinkles by stopping the facial muscles from contracting. In the scalp, this has the effect of loosening the muscles, relieving the tension, allowing regrowth to take place. The effect is more pronounced the more Botox sessions you undertake, but we know that you can begin to see results even after one single session. The problem with Botox is that it's not something you can do yourself, and it has to be carried out by a licensed professional, typically a doctor, the price tag of several hundred dollars a session, meaning the cost will effectively run out of control. The DIY alternative to Botox is scalp massage. Just like massaging will relieve a cramped or tense muscle on your arms or your legs, it will have the same effect on your muscles surrounding the scalp. It also is free of any side effects, and the more you massage, the better results you can expect. A downside is that you'll be required around 36 hours of massaging your scalp with your hands to see results. This will seem daunting for many users as scalp massages become tedious pretty fast. A quicker alternative is to use a specialized device called a grow band. Due to its design, the grow band will massage your entire head at once, meaning you can achieve the same results much faster. Newer versions of the grow band, like our grow band pro, are also fully automated, which removes any effort on the part of the user. You simply place the device on your head and turn it on and let it do all the hard work of massaging your scalp as you get on with your day. This allows you to rack up the cumulative hours of massaging that is needed to get results. Remember, from the study on the scalp massages, the participants needed 36 hours of massaging in total to see good results. Since the grow band is a more powerful device than manual scalp massages and works simultaneously over the entire scalp, the results could be quicker. The grow band pushes the entire scalp upwards, reducing tension around the perimeter of the scalp, whilst pinching and squeezing the top of the scalp to help reduce chronic fibrosis. Pair the grow band with a suitable DHT blocker and a topical stimulant, and you can get even better results. Head over to hairguard.com and start seeing natural, long-lasting results in as little as 10 minutes a day. The grow band Pro is only available at hairguard.com, so head over today and get started. That's it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.